So I am back with part two of my leaves in tea bag um, project that I'm working on. And if you haven't seen part one already, I'll make sure and put a link down in the description below. And, you know, in, in typical Susan fashion, this is sort of an idea that I'm going backwards on. I knew that I wanted to make, um, make a book <laughs> and I wanted to use my leaves and I wanted to do something with tea bags. So first I glued the leaves to the tea bags and then I had to let them dry. And now I'm going to, um, you know, dress them up a little bit, kind of like if I was working on my nature clusters. So what I'll do is I'm going to be going through all the uh, tea bags that I did yesterday and dressing them up a little bit. So as I get to the repetitive parts, I will speed up that part of the video so that we're not here all day long because I have, you know, next steps to do after I get to the end of all of this. But before I start stitching in things, I just wanted to say that the pieces, okay, that I'm adding to this are like with my nature clusters. There's these little, uh, those little plastic trays that I have there. I have gobs of them and they're filled with twigs and strings and fibers, lichen, um, just anything I might find out in the yard, more leaves, uh, little bits of fabric that I've dyed, bits of burlap, and you'll see me use a lot of jute string that I separate because it's one of my favorite things to do. And so I'm just going to kind of play around with each of these. And again, this is, uh, this is part two, but then there's going to have to be more because after this they're going to have to go into whatever kind of book format it is that I'm going to be, be doing with these. And I want to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me on this journey of mine, this artistic journey and sharing it. Um, I really, I can't say thank you enough because your support, your feedback, your comments, the way you join in the conversations with one another, all of that is the kind of fuel that I need to motivate me to keep making videos, to keep making art and to keep sharing my art. Because I, you know, like so many of us artistic souls, I am very nervous whenever I'm doing anything that, you know, is going to be judged. It's really hard to put our stuff out there to be judged. And, you know, don't think just because I'm posting videos on YouTube that, wow, I have like buckets of confidence because I don't, <laughs> I do not have the confidence to share this stuff. But um, having gone through, oh gosh, 30 years of, you know, the publishing world, and earned a lot of rejections on manuscripts that would go out and come back and some that sold and a lot more that didn't, um, especially when I thought it was some of my best writing ever and that was the stuff that didn't sell. You get a little bit of a thick skin and you realize you've got two choices. You can either, you know, share your stuff or you can just, you know, be a hermit and not share anything and not feed your soul. And the more I share my stuff, the more that opens up space inside of me to do some more creative things. I had no idea I was going to do something like this, you know, six months ago, three months ago, probably even a month ago. I didn't think this was where I was going. I just was kind of thinking, I want to play with leaves. I want to, I want to do some things with leaves. So, you know, the more we share, the braver we get the braver we get, the more we share. You know, it's kind of one of those circles, those merry-go-rounds that we don't want to jump off of. We want to keep, we want to keep jumping onto it because we feed off of each other. I really, really believe we feed off of each other because think about it, okay? Granted, most of the time, it's the negative stuff that we let, you know, overpower us because if somebody says something negative to us, don't we just hold on to that all the time and, you know, we let it beat us up? Well, what if we did the other way? What if we had all that positive energy that we get from sharing our stuff, from complimenting one another, from giving ideas? You know, when I can say, well, okay, what would you do with a tea bag? And I get a bunch of comments down below, people showing me pictures of what they've done, other people making suggestions. Uh, you know, we, we had that kind of a discussion in the Facebook group the other day where I was talking about, you know, not being able to scan these perhaps because they're not perfectly flat. And there were a couple suggestions that came up, things I hadn't thought about doing. I'd forgotten that I have a scan app and I could scan them, you know, which is like taking a picture on my iPad or on my phone, and that would turn it into a PDF, which then I could uh, turn into a JPEG. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. Uh, that's, that comes from sharing. So many things come from sharing. And if we keep sharing and we keep holding each other up and complimenting each other when you know we, we feel good about something that somebody's done and we keep telling them how good we think it is and how wonderful we think they are and how happy we are that they shared it, maybe, 
it's going to push out that other stuff that's not so happy. Maybe it's going to push out the stuff that, you know, we, um, we think is not so great and we focus on for way too long. So I don't know. That, that's, that's my beginning ramble here. I realize I went through the first tea bag and, and I'm not talking you through all this stuff, but it's not a tutorial. I mean, it's, I'm auditioning different things on the tea bags, seeing what I like and, and playing with it. And I don't know, um, if you want something that's a little bit more traditional tutorial, you're going to have to let me know because right now doing videos like these, they're working for the way it has to be filmed around the house here. And if you don't like the speeded up parts, let me know. And the next ones I do, I'll maybe slow them down. Maybe. I love that piece of fabric. That's one of my favorites. That's one of my rusty fabrics. Somebody said something to me about my tea bags being really big, and they're not. It's just some of them are opened up all the way. This one's not, but in the upper corner, you can see the tea bags have been um, split open all the way. So it's just a matter of whether I want to use them folded over, which seem to be good with this uh, redwood leaf. And again, these are not finished like they are right now. They've got to go into the book. And by the time I got to the end of this, I sort of figured out what kind of a book format that I wanted to do. And I think I'll start on the pages probably tomorrow after my live stream. I'm looking forward to, to putting these into some kind of a format so I can flip the pages. And all of the threads that I'm using for stitching these things together, it's all a cotton embroidery floss, just a single strand until I get to the end. And I'm using a strand of silk uh, that I dyed and that's only because it was already threaded in the needle and that made it easy. You will hear a lot of my wind chimes in the background today because I'm recording this on the day that we've been having um, two days of really, really heavy winds. So they'll be gonging and clanging and making all kinds of music for us in the background there. But I hope everybody's having a great day with whatever creative project that you are working on today. Um, I had so much fun doing these and I approached them with utter abandon. I had no idea what I was going to do. I knew I had to do something to make them look a little better than they did yesterday. I mean, they look nice on the tea bags, but I wanted to dress them up a little bit more. Now, if I was doing this over again, and, and maybe I should just say the next time I do this, because I know I'll do this over again, but the next time I do this, I will possibly have a book I'll put together or I will have a plan for what kind of a structure the book is going to be because I, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with the book until about halfway through this video and then I figured out, okay, I think I know what I can do with it. Um, you know, and that's just, that's the way it rolls in Susan's studio. You just sort of dive in and I was afraid to kind of do this without really knowing what I was going to do and at the end... I was happy. I was happy the way it all came together. So let me know down in the comments what you are working on today. And did the video I did yesterday, did it inspire you to do anything with tea bags? And if so, what might that be? I'm looking forward to doing a lot more with tea bags because they're stronger than we think. Kind of like us, right? Aren't we all stronger than we think? Or isn't somebody else isn't is probably the one that tells us, you know, you're stronger than you think you are. But tea bags, I mean, they go through a lot in that boiling water to make our tea or near near boiling water to make our tea. And so I've, you know, kind of abused some of these and been really pleased with the way they've held up. Same thing with the leaves. I learned something with stitching leaves while I was working on this. Something a couple of you had already told me, but it was the first time I gave it gave it a try myself. And so I'm just kind of trying to dress these up. And I had originally thought I was going to make a small book. But by the time I got that long one done, I realized the book size was going to have to be a little different. It wasn't, it was like, nope, that one's not done yet. Get some lichen, get some twigs. Let's see what else we can add to it. So these winds that we've been having, I have my outside studio where I had been gathering, you know, through the summer, I had gathered all my twigs and lichen and acorns and mosses and just so many things that I had gathered and they were all in little containers on my shelves out on the, the outside studio. And then these gale winds came in and now everything has been scattered all over the deck. I mean, it's like, there's, the shelves are completely empty, except for the places where I had some big pieces of wood. Everything is completely empty and blown all over the place. So I need to just tell myself it's okay. I will get inspired all over again as I wander around the deck and the yard and gather them up again. 
but it was a little disheartening to look out there. We also, we lost one tree, um, small, well, not really a tree, a small bush. One of our mallows pulled up out of the ground, but I was really not that surprised that we lost it. It wasn't ever supposed to be growing where it was. I had stuck it in the hugel bed just to get some roots on it. And then it took off and had gotten so big that I hadn't had a chance to move it. So I'm not surprised that it fell over. We've lost them in, in storms before. So I'll just chop it up and put more pieces of it in the ground all over the place and see what the bunnies decide that they are going to let grow. And because it's fallen over, I will be able to um, go get a bunch of the leaves and see. I don't know if I'll get any dye off of them. There are not that many flowers on right now, but this summer it'll be flowers all over the place. I became really in love with this particular one. This one, I just, I really like this a lot. And this is what told me that it's going to have to be a, a book that's in portrait format and uh, probably my 5 by 7 watercolor paper that I have. And I will start thinking what I'm going to do with the papers. Am I going to paint them? Am I going to stain them? Am I going to use pastels? I'm kind of pondering that kind of thing. So I'll probably make more pages than I need and then decide how I'm going to put them together. So gradually I'm working up on these so that eventually I can go get some of my canvases out of the garage, my larger canvases, and do this sort of thing with my nature pieces on a larger format. You know, I did the wall hanging. You know, we started with the little tiny clusters that were about the size of a quarter, then they got a little bit bigger, and I did the wall hanging, and now we're doing the book and, and working my way back up to doing some canvas pieces. But you know, it's, and you could glue these. You don't have to hand sew these. You absolutely could just grab your Fabri-Tac and glue these things together and that would be fine. Um, I just, there's something to me about stitching them together. And I do use glue for some things. And I glued, of course, the, the leaves to the tea bags to start with. Um, but I discovered that doing the, the hand stitching on these just kind of made me feel a little bit more connected to the project. And that was a good thing. I wanted to be connected. Yeah, that one came out good. All right, what's next? I also, for some reason, did a whole bunch of things with yarrow. And I don't know, I'm gonna I might end up doing a few more of these off camera. Those are my dogwood leaves and the dogwood crumbs, you know, from the dried leaves, uh, from the dogwood leaves, that's the crumbs that are the texture underneath there. And I know there's some other things that I'm going to do with this when I get to the book format, but this is when I figured out that just that little bit of matte medium that I'd put over it really was enough for me to be able to very easily stitch through these leaves and get the stitching effect that I really wanted on them. And when I put the matte medium on, you know, it doesn't look like plastic. They still look like leaves um, because I put the matte medium on and then I took a damp cloth and, you know, dabbed all over it to kind of, um, you know, reduce the lines and reduce the, the plastic feel that you get from something like that. So it really, it has a very nice feel to it and it made it very easy to sew on the leaves. But I'm glad that I did the other experiments with uh, the leaves raw, you know, just as they were, because I was pretty sure which ones would break, you know, when I was doing them dry and which ones wouldn't. So it was good to learn that kind of thing. But now the idea that you can do some matte medium or glue or something over them and then stitch, you know, that's going to open up a whole lot more opportunities. There's so many more things you could do with them then. And if you applied any kind of a backing to it, even just glued them all over tea bags, uh, you could get your paper punch. If you didn't see the picture I posted on Instagram um, the other day, you know, I took uh, some different punches that I had, some decorative punches, and punched holes in, you know, in leaves, and then stitched things back together again. Well, if you had them coated a little bit with some matte medium, it would really make a difference. And somebody else told me they used um, liquid acrylic wax, which I guess here in the States would be like a floor wax. I know in the UK, there are crafty liquid acrylic waxes. Um, here in the art supplies here in the States, the only ones I've found have been more like a, a Dorland's wax, which is a little bit heavier, but you could use like a floor wax. So that came out really good, just being able to stitch on it. And I'm, I'm thinking about some other things I want to do, but I'm going to wait until I actually get to the book and putting them into the book before I dress that up anymore. But see how easy that came out? The leaves didn't crack at all. And my stitches got straighter. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you know, we, we'll take whatever little helps we can get. All right, so this one, I have an idea, but I'm gonna save that one for the last. 
Oh, the fennel. I love that fennel, but I really want it to pop a little bit more than it is. And yeah, I think putting it on something dark is going to be good. And I could do that, but you know, what the heck? Why don't we just, you know, get be, be a rebel. Be a rebel, Susan. That's it. Tear it up. Let's tear the edges. Now you could ink the edges if you wanted to. I was not quite that energetic because that would have mean, meant going into the studio and finding wherever I left the ink pads and all that stuff. And the studio itself is pretty much a disaster right now. So yeah, tearing is good and I didn't ink anything. But I think that's too big and I'm going to have to rip that down a little bit. And of course, it doesn't want to fray nearly as, as easily as I want it to. That's one of the um, pieces of fabrics that has been uh, dyed with Bombay India ink. And it gets in there really thick and it makes it harder to, to fray it. But it's enough to, to dress it up just a little bit. So what are we going to do to this one? Decisions, decisions. And you should see my desk right now after playing like this for a couple hours. <laughs> it's just, I'm going to have to, after I upload this, I'm going to have to clean my desk. Going to have to. There's no, no, well, I won't be able to do a live stream tomorrow unless I clean my desk. Because there is no working room left whatsoever. I, I don't know what it is about fraying those little bits of, of jute string, but I just love the way it looks. So I changed my mind. It's like, okay, before we do that, let's actually stitch it together. Okay, we're going to try and fray it a little bit more first. Do you like frayed threads on things? There's some people that can't stand them and they need to cut them all off. Me, I like to keep making more. And probably by the time I get around to putting them into book, I'll try to do even more. All right, so now I got my needle, I got my thread. Let's get this baby sewn down. I'm excited now. I'm excited to be having so many ideas and wanting to implement them. And you know, ideas are great. Don't feel like every idea is going to be a finished project. You know, we talked about that in the last video. They're not all finished projects. There are sometimes failed projects, but sometimes they even go back to failed projects. I have one failed project in mind that I'm still thinking about going back and, uh, and tackling. And I have some old canvases I found in the garage that I had done all these base coats on and you know gotten some some colors and textures on them when I was doing magazine collages and it's like no I I need to do something with those so I'm probably going to bring those in and start gessoing over them and then maybe I'll just cut the canvas right off the the frame and make them into covers I don't know or maybe I will make something on the canvas but I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to do something with the dark purple background that's just really not my thing right now not in my color palette. Do you find yourself working in the same colors over and over again? I have uh, some really bright colors, both in, you know fabrics and paints and papers even, and I keep coming back to my, my earth tones. They're the ones that make me the happiest. So for a while, I guess I'll just work my way through all the earth tones. Now I could have, you know, maybe done something a little fancy around the edges there, but I, I think for this this next stage until, like I said, it's going to go in the book. And, you know, I, I really, I rarely plan out all the pieces that are going to go into any kind of a book or a journal. Usually it's, usually I start with a cover base and the format, whether it's going to be a hard back or a soft back. And then I put the pages in, the base pages in, and then I start decorating it and see where it's going to take me. So starting with the things that are going to go on the pages first, or some of the things that are going to go on the pages, um, it was definitely a departure for me, which is good. You know, we need to mess up the way we would normally work because it kind of shakes up our brain matter. And then we can come back to the table and, you know, be inspired maybe to go in a different direction. All these little bits and pieces. It. I wish you could see them. You know, I, I got to get better at doing the video zooms and things because there, um, there's so many little details in there that I'm just not sure if you can really see on the the video. But maybe you can. I'll try and take some good pictures and post them on Instagram. 
If you're following me over there, I'm trying to get better about posting on Instagram, trying to get better at, at being around more. It's, it's hard to balance. I've never been really good with the time management thing. I don't know about you, but it is not a core competency for me. <laughs> if there was a medal or a prize you could get for extending the amount of time that something's supposed to take you so that it takes you 10 times longer, that would be me. I'm very, very good at that. But trying to figure out how to post and respond on Instagram and post and respond on Facebook and post and, well, I don't do Twitter anymore. Not really. Yeah, I like that one. I used to do Twitter. I was one of the early adopters many, many years ago when Twitter first came out and hardly anybody was over there and that's where all the writers were hanging out. And it was kind of a thrill back then because I was named... Uh, to a couple of lists on uh, Mashable website about people to follow on Twitter, which is just hysterical now because I go over there now and it's like, no, <laughs> it's, it's like this giant cocktail party and everybody's talking way too loud and showing off and what have you. And it's um, and a lot of politics, which I don't do. So, yeah, it's, it's not my thing. If you like it, that's great. It's just not my thing anymore. But it was fun way back when it was first getting started and all the writers would hang out. We would have a whole lot of um, writing conversations. Now I find that I'm, I'm hanging out mostly on Facebook just because it's comfortable for me. It's easy. I can type on the computer. Instagram gives me trouble because typing on my phone to make all the posts is really a pain. And I don't know. If, if you use some other method yourself to post to Instagram please let me know. I know I've got the option on Facebook to, if I go to something called publishing tools or something like that, if you use that, let me know because we might need to chat. I have one friend that says she uses Hootsuite and I'm debating that. And a couple of other people use some paid services and you know, I, I can't see putting the money into that right now, maybe down the road, but I would like to do more of it because there's so much artistic inspiration over on, on Instagram. I'm really enjoying looking at all, you know, I scroll through it all the time on my phone or on my iPad. But the easiest thing for me to do as far as typing goes is always on my computer. And so I can respond to posts on Instagram on my computer. It's just I can't post to the thing there and all the hashtags. and ugh, Social media, you know, we, we love it. We hate it. We need it. We don't want it. But that's the way it is with a lot of things in life. And so you just have to kind of, you know, balance with what works for you. You know, maybe you need to take a social media break for a while. I've done that in the past. Um, I unintentionally took, you know, a, a pretty much of a break from YouTube last year other than my lives. So now just trying to get things charged back up again, trying to, to get people to watch the videos. Those of you that share my videos in your groups and with friends, I really appreciate it. Um, if you share about my Facebook group, if you haven't joined already, I hope you'll join us. It's more of an artist salon where... Um, artistic souls in all genres are welcome to come and share, support, and connect with other artistic souls. It's a small group right now, only a little over 100 people, and that's okay. We will grow or not grow. Um, I have no emotional attachment to it right now. I just am, am happy to see all the energy and see all the conversations going on. Gosh, the backside of that, I love the staining too. Ah, so much fun to see the different... Um, stains that you get from the inks and the, the tea and the matte medium even drying in different ways. I had so much yarrow. I don't know why I did three room with yarrow. I guess because it was so nice and flat and I wasn't thinking about variety. So now that I've done this, I might do a few more off camera before I start to work on the book, which is fine. You guys don't have to see me make everything, right? Or maybe you do. I don't know. Those people that, that do videos every single day and then they edit the videos every single day, this has taken me some time right now um, because I'm, I have to do the video and then I have to do the voiceover. Okay, so that tea bag just seemed to me like it was going to be another little book. And I know I said it's going to go in a book, but it might be a book within a book. And so that's kind of where my, my brain was at thinking about that one is that maybe I will... Uh, find a way to put it into the upcoming book so that it still opens and closes like a little book inside it so I can get some interactive elements happening in there. And again, these are two leaves that had been dried for a very long time, 
but when I covered them with some matte medium and put them on the tea bag, it made them much easier to stitch. So I will definitely be doing some more of that. Are you doing the start with the leaf challenge along with me? I hope you are. I hope you're using the hashtag on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram so we can see what's going on with you and your ideas to work with leaves. And for those of you that are in the snow covered or barren parts of the world where you do not have leaves available right now, I'm sorry if I'm teasing you by doing these, but I save leaves all the time. I put them in between the pages of books and uh, then have to go digging through them to find the ones I'm looking for. But I save them all the time so that they're there when I want them. Because I tend to binge in a certain area so I knew that when I started working with leaves I would go through a lot of them so I wanted to have them ready to go. Got a little bit out of frame here on this this one here sorry about that. I did figure out that I can move my filming thing to the big big screen while I'm filming so that I will be able to stay in frame a little bit better next time. But it really makes a difference. I couldn't believe it with the matte medium. You know, look at I'm precise. I'm not breaking any leaves. So while there is something about working with them completely natural is interesting and definitely educates me about the properties of the leaf, it's a whole lot less frustrating to do it this way. So are you working on a journal right now? Are you working on ephemera? Are you cleaning up your studio? Are you doing some reorganization? Let me know down in the comments what's, what's going on in your creative corner right now. I promise after I upload this, I am going to clean off my desk. And I'm thinking tomorrow's live stream, I'm probably going to um, do some slow stitching. I'm going to need, need some breathing time just to kind of kick back and relax with my friends tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way these are all coming together. I've got those beads and buttons right there in the screen. I don't think I used them on any of these yet, but I might when I get starting to put the book together. We shall see. What's interesting to me with doing the voiceover is by the time I get to the end of the voiceover, I have so many ideas for, for next projects I want to do. It really surprises me. And it shouldn't surprise me because the more we work, the more our creativity comes up to the surface, right? It just kind of bubbles to the surface and it's, it's like, feed me, feed me. See, I'm really insistent. I want this to be a book. I want this to open and close like a book. I'm not really pleased when I finally finish with it because I, I messed something up, but I want this to close like a book. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'll just stitch on some little threads here. It's a little hole where I took the staple out of the tea bag. And in theory, this was a really good idea. But when I get to the next part, you'll see what I did that sort of messed it up. <laughs> I was like, well, if I'd have been thinking when I put the, the next piece on, but I still think I can make it work one way or the other. You know, uh, it's just an opportunity to do something a little bit differently. If the first thing doesn't come out the way you, you think it's going to, then you come at it from a different angle. And just don't stress. I mean, if... if if nothing else today, I guess the message that I would say to you is don't stress while you're doing your art. Don't feel like it has to come out the way it was in your head. It's fun when that happens, but don't stress if it doesn't. Don't feel like your video has to be absolutely perfect. I'm recording a video while my husband has a, a meeting going on, so there's a very good chance you'll hear him in the background. That's life in the time of COVID, you know? Um, don't, I'm not going to stress over it. I'm not going to not do a video because you might hear some voices in the background. And if you're somebody that doesn't like that and that wants to harp on me because of bad sound, move along, move along. You go find somebody else's perfect video because this is never going to be a perfect video. My art is never going to be a perfect representation of what I had in my head. Nothing in life is perfect. And all perfect means is that we are trying to hide something that, that we think has some kind of a problem that nobody else can see. You know, if I held up everything that I thought had a problem and tried to show you the flaws, you wouldn't see half of them. You might not see any of them. Just because I see them and I get hung up on being a perfectionism, perfectionist, 
Life is too short to stress about making things be perfect. I want you all to go out there and make your art your way and not get hung up on it not being perfect. Make your video your way and don't get hung up on it not being perfect. Share your work. Enjoy your creative journey. Enjoy playing with art. Because I sure am. And I'm a lot happier since I said, you know, to, to little Miss Perfectionist, you got to go. You got to go. I was, I used to be okay with you riding along with me in the car. And then I was okay moving little Miss Perfectionist to the back seat. And then, you know what? This corner coming up here, there's a bus that comes along. I'm going to drop you off right here because you can take the bus to Nowheresville because I do not need to have Little Miss Perfectionist sitting beside me all the time. The person I want to have sitting beside me all the time is someone like you. Someone like you who just wants to create their creative projects. I don't care if you are making um, a painting, if you are a sculptor, if you are a basket weaver, if you are making junk journals, if you are dyeing fabrics, if you're building a garden, if you're a musician or a dancer, if you have a creative soul, you owe it to yourself to encourage that creative soul to go out and dance in the world. Make your art and share it. Why? Because it makes you happy. And if you are happy for a minute, for an hour, for a day, there is a very good chance that you are going to meet somebody else along the way that needs to be happy too. And it might just be that your paths cross at just the right time that you can say to the person, hey, I saw that thing you did the other day and man, it is awesome. You have got so much talent and the joy that you take in creating your work, it comes through. And if you said that to somebody else, can you just imagine how that might shift their world for a minute, for an hour, maybe for a day, and then they could do it to somebody else, and it goes on and on and on? That's all I want. That's all I want. I want somebody sitting beside me that's going to do that for me, and I hope I can do that for you and just say, hey, that thing you made, it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. And you gave me so many great ideas so that I can't wait to get back and start creating myself. You know, that, that creative energy, it's, it, it, it just expands. The more we use it, the more we share it, the more we believe we have a right to do it, it just expands and we get happier and we share more and other people get happier and they share more. You know, and the world goes around and around. Let's just keep making art. Let's keep sharing art. This is my way of kind of trying to fix it <laughs> so that it'll still look a little bit like a book. But I still, I like it. I like it. It's going to work when I put it in the book. So let's see what these are going to look like on the page. How cool is that, huh? So, of course, I'm not going to be able to use those plain white papers. I'm going to have to do something else with the papers. But you get the idea. What else have we got? Look at that. That's the yarrow. And some cinnamon sticks and some fibers. Love the, the rusty tea behind it. Some more yarrow. Some lichen. I like this one with the uneven format. Next time I think I'll tear some of the tea bags into shapes ahead of time and then put the stuff on them. And another thing of yarrow with a long, I think that's a stick from um, eucalyptus. So does this make you want to go make a book? These are my dogwood leaves. Look at the stitches. Look at how much better they are now. And again, that doesn't look like much now. It's kind of a hot mess. I'm not done yet. <laughs> There will be more. I like the way the fennel came out too on the fabric. Very cool. And this one, I really like this one. That was from the redwood tree. So yeah, let's go out and make some great art and share it. See you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>